everybody, welcome to Explore Killington. I'm Slato and welcoming, welcoming back Sarah for round number two as my co-host. Great to see you again. Yeah, thanks for having me oh. back, Slato. Yeah, hey, I'm really excited. Winter has returned here to Killington, even though the calendar says March and we might be expecting some spring weather. I'll tell you, there's nothing very spring-like today, which I'll tell you what, that doesn't bother me at all because the more snow, the more I like it. Yeah, no, winter is back in full swing for sure. It is a a little bit chilly out here today. It is, but I've got some good uh, ski runs planned for us, which will get the blood pumping and warm us up. And speaking of some exciting things, we got a great show coming your way here over the next hour with Explore Killington. We're going to roll another segment of my interview that I had with Mike Salomano here a few weeks ago at the Umbrella Bar. And I'm also uh, looking to catch up with maybe some skiers up on the slope, see if I can't catch an interview right on the hill somewhere. Sounds good. I'm definitely going to try and look out for Grizzly again, you know, my new friend from uh, the last time I was here. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, looking forward to talking with him a little bit and, um, you know, looking behind the scenes at the Killington snowmaking here and uh, what goes into that. So some exciting stuff. We got a lot of stuff going. Well, it's first thing in the morning here as we're getting rolling. They haven't even started the chairlift yet, but you know what? You and I are going to be the first two in line. And second part of the show, we're going to head down to the lookout. So there's a lot coming your way. What do you say we get ready? Uh, we should have brought some coffee over here. I we'll, think we might be able to get first chair. We're totally beating the crowd here. So, Slato, we're here on the Superstar Quad, head making our way up, and you can see right over here we got the snow making towers that uh, looks like they're getting ready to set them up again. You know, Sarah, it's the first time in over 10 years the Killington has committed to making snow this late in the season. And you think we got a lot of snow here? Well, I do, but it's not enough. Killington's like, no, 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 we'll never make it into May with this amount of snow. So they've got the compressors coming back, they're setting them up, and they're gonna fire up those guns. You know, we did a piece, or we have a piece here at KTV. It's a behind the scenes look at all the things that go into snow making. It's very interesting. Why don't you stay tuned? Sarah and I are about to get off the Superstar chair and take a little run. Check Woo! this out. Yeah. My name is Will Conroy, I'm 20 years old and I'm a snowmaker at Killington Resort. Basically we, you know, get here, get suited up and then put a radio on, get everything together, talk to the foreman, plan gets formulated. When we're making snow, you know, usually you'll have your run, which is, you know, a trail that guns, whether it be a section or a couple different trails or whatever, um, that you'll get sent to go maintain, you know, make sure everything's running right. For the most part, we work in pairs, um, sometimes more. It depends what job needs to get done. You know, we work four or five, 12 hour shifts a week. So, um, yeah, it's a lot of time, especially during the winter. Yeah, you know, it does seem simple, um, you know, water and air make snow, but I, I'd say for the most part you have to be mentally prepared as well as physically prepared because, you know, you're lifting stuff, it's a very tough physical job, and I think most people would understand that from the get-go, but if you're out there for six hours and it's really freezing cold, it definitely takes a toll on you mentally because you can almost get like a lost feeling, especially if you don't necessarily know where you're going, if you're new or something like that. You definitely have to be prepared to, uh, you know, get the job done and not make excuses, you know, can't feel my arms, blah, 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 you know, my feet are soaked, well, that's too bad, keep moving. So it's, it's definitely not for the weak of heart, and, you know, there's, snowmakers are definitely pretty, pretty core about that, you know, just getting the job done, that's what it's really all about. Channel locks is definitely our multi-tool. You know, we use it as everything, it's a, it's a pair of pliers, it's a hammer, we sharpen them a certain way so you can scrape ice um, out of hydrants. You can chop ice off stuff, uh, use them to close quick connects, which is what hold the, holds the hoses into the uh, hydrants. Sometimes those break off. And that's just the type of job that it is, you know, not everything's ever gonna be perfect. So, you know, if you have an ear broken off or something like that, and you know, the other one still works, you just gotta kind of make it work, uh, make it run. So channel locks definitely help with that. The colder it is, the more water you can flow through the gun and uh, hence the more snow you can make. Um, because uh, when the air is colder, it'll crystallize the water faster. And um, you know, obviously you can get more water coming out. It means more snow on the ground. So you know, if it's negative 10, you can, like I said, you can blow an eight, 10 foot pile and 
you know, half a day. It probably annoys my friends sometimes too. Every time we ride certain trails, they'll be like, hey, hey, look, I made this snow, you know? <laughs> it's pretty satisfying at the end of the day. And you come back, you know, after your last run and there's an eight foot pile of snow there that wasn't there before when you were there two hours ago. You're like, hell yeah, man, you know, I put that there. It's kind of cool because it, it's almost like, I mean, I, I kind of tell, explain it to people like, I feel like a kid at recess, you know, in fourth grade when you're going outside and it's, it's like your little wonderland type thing. Um, and it's, you definitely see a lot of crazy things. I've seen some shooting stars that I thought were, uh, were planes falling out of the sky because they were so bright, you know, just these massive flame trails. And because you're just so high up, there's not a lot of light pollution, um, you know, and especially on clear nights. And uh, sunsets and sunrises are just unbelievable, um, you know. I mean, I was, the other day, I was sitting at the top of Superstar Lift Shack and watching the last of the sun, you know, hit Mount Washington. You know, it's, there's really nothing like it, in my opinion. And that's what makes it all worth it for me, is, you know, even that one moment is just absolute, absolutely beautiful. If you're looking for job satisfaction and, you know, fulfillment, you can't beat it. Good stuff, Sarah. Hey, that was our little snowmaking piece from Killington. And, you know, I gotta say kudos to Killington. They're putting their snowmaking money where their mouth is. I think we've been resting on our laurels here a little bit too long, but the fact they're bringing back the compressors to pump out even more snow on Superstar tells me that this party is not gonna end anytime soon. Hey, thank you to all those hard-making snowmakers out there too. That is just awesome. Yeah, you're right about that. Yeah, well, you know, it is nice out here today, but it's a little bit chillier, so let's head on over to Bear Mountain where it tends to be a little bit warmer and maybe we'll catch a little sunshine while we're over there. Let's give it a try, I'm all right behind right. you. Hey, sounds good. Ladies first. Here we go. We're on that sweet little traverse over to Bear Mountain, right off the top of Superstar. Woo! And it is gorgeous out. Conditions could not be better. Yeah, I think I'm getting warmer already. I know, I know I'm heating up. <laughs> I can feel that temperature increase as we're getting closer to Bear Mountain. Come on, I'll race you. Hey Sarah, I think the weather over here at Bear is fantastic. I think it is too. I'm not sure what's happening tomorrow, but luckily, our weather forecast is coming up next. Stay tuned. Ooh, exciting. <laughs> 